Welcome to Electron Online, and here's our next example of oscillatory motion with a damping factor. So here we have the same damping factor as before, 2 kilograms per second, a spring with spring constant 5 newtons per meter, and a mass of 0.5 kilograms. In this case, the question is, how long will it take for the amplitude of the oscillations to go down to one-tenth what they were initially at time equals zero? And then finally, how many oscillations will the system go through when we reach an amplitude of one-tenth or 10% of its original amplitude? All right, how do we do that? Well, first of all, we need to know the frequency equation. And of course, the new frequency with damping is equal to the square root of k over m minus b squared divided by 4m squared. So that will give us the frequency, and from that we should be able to figure out the number of oscillations in the time that it takes to go to one-tenth of its original amplitude. Secondly, we need the equation describing the motion. So we have x as a function of time is equal to the amplitude, the so let's say the original amplitude, times e to the minus b over 2m times t times the cosine of omega prime t minus the phase angle. Now let's say in this case, let, let's, say, uh, let's set the um, phase angle equal to zero, which means we start from the maximum amplitude. So what the equation will look like when we graph it, it should look something like this. So we go like this, and then the amplitude will diminish over time. So we have the exponential decay function. And we want to know at what point how long will it take in time, because the horizontal axis is time, how long will it take, t is equal to question mark, to go to one-tenth the original amplitude, if this is the original amplitude right there. Okay, how do we do that? Well, it's this portion of the equation that determines that. And so what we can say is that x will be one-tenth of its original amplitude. And so we say that one-tenth a sub naught equals a sub naught times e to the minus b over 2m times t, and now we're going to solve for t. I'm not put that error in a strange place, but that's okay. So what is t equal to? Well, in order to do that, we have to first simplify this. You can see a sub naught is on both sides, so that cancels out. And now multiply both sides by 10, we get 1 is equal to 10. No, I don't want to do that. I think I want to leave the 1 tenth on that side. Okay, so let me rewrite the equation. So we have 1 tenth is equal to e to the minus b over 2m times t. What we want to do now is take the natural log of both sides to get rid of the exponential form. So we take the natural log of 1 tenth is equal to the natural log of e to the minus b over 2m times t. Of course, when we take the natural log of that, the expo exponential drops out and we get the natural log of 1 tenth is equal to minus b over 2m times t. And then we solve that equation for t, turning it around and cross multiplying, we get t is equal to, let's see, minus 2m times the natural log of 1 tenth divided by b. So I, I multiply the 2m over here, took the negative, put over here, take the b divided here, and then turn the equation around. Now all I have to do is plug in the numbers. And so this is equal to minus 2 times m, which is 0 0.5, times the natural log of 1 tenth, all divided by b, and in this case, b is equal to 2. And so that gives us minus 0 0.5 times the natural log of 1 tenth. And with my calculator, let's see what we get. So we take the natural log of that times a minus and times 0 0.5. And we get 1.15, and that would be in terms of seconds. So 1.15. 1, 5 seconds. So that's how long it would take in order to reach one tenth of its original amplitude. Now, how many oscillations will that take? All right. The next thing we want to do is find out, of course, out the frequency of oscillation. And so we can do that by taking this equation and plugging the number. So k is equal to 5, m is equal to 0 0.5 minus b, which is equal to 2, so that's 2 squared divided by 4 times m squared, which is 0 0.5 squared. So that's 4 divided by 4, which is uh, 1, and 1 divided by 0.25 is 4, that's 10 minus 4, which is equal to the square root of 6, and so what is that equal to? Okay, 6, take the square root, we get 2.45. So 2.45, that would be radians per second, and from that, we can find the frequency, because that's not the frequency of oscillation, that is actually the angular frequency. 
So the frequency is equal to omega prime divided by uh, 2 pi, which is equal to 2.45 divided by 2 pi, which is equal to, so divide by 2, divide by pi equals, that's 0 0.39, 0 0.39 hertz. That means the period is equal to 1 over f prime. Now notice I put all, all these primes on there. The primes simply indicate that I'm dealing with a damped system. I'm not dealing with an undamped system, so I just use prime for damped systems. So this is 1 over 0 0.39. That would be the period. And so if I take the inverse of that, the period is 2.565 seconds. 2.565 seconds for the for the period. And now if I only have this much time, notice it doesn't take a lot of oscillations because each oscillation takes 2.565 seconds. So the number of oscillations is equal to the time divided by the period for each oscillation, per oscillation, which is equal to the time was 1.15 seconds. The time for each oscillation is 2.565 seconds. And yes, it'll be definitely a lot less than one. So take the inverse of that, times 1.15, and it's about 0 0.0.448 oscillations. Um, yeah, didn't pick my number very well, did I? So how could we change that? How, how could we improve that problem so there'll be a number of oscillations to, in order to get down to one-tenth of the original amplitude? Of course, that would require a smaller b. If b was smaller, if this was a smaller number, we come up here, that means the frequency would be greater. If the frequency is larger, then of course the, the uh, period would be smaller. And then coming up here, <clears throat> yeah, so the period would be smaller and there would be more oscillations to be able to fit inside that. And that's how we would do that. Another way to do it, of course, would be to make a bigger K. If K was bigger, again, you would have a bigger frequency and the problem would look maybe a little bit better. But anyway, it's still a good example. That's how you figure out how long it takes to go to a, a small fraction of your original amplitude and figure out what the frequency is, the period of oscillations, and the number of oscillations in a given amount of time. So therefore, it's still a good example.